Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The cost of borrowing money is about to get even more expensive. How the Federal Reserve is expected to start dialing back at its aggressive pace of rate hikes. And let's look out there with live cam. Mike was saying there's some scattered showers, but here it looks pretty nice. Downtown San Antonio at 62 degrees. And we jump right into a Wednesday. Happy hump day. It is December 14th. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, uh, getting ready for those temperatures to change a little cooler this morning. Yeah, we did notice that, that cool breeze yep. out there. Mike is tracking a shower or a storm here or there. Yeah, if you're heading up 35 out uh, north of Austin, you may run into some fairly big storms this morning, and those are continuing to kind of move on out of here. But yeah, a couple of lingering ones in behind. It is uh, much more pleasant. Humidity has dropped down. It is going to be breezy throughout the day. Once we get rid of these clouds, we're going to have just an absolutely gorgeous day today. It is pretty nice out there, uh, over there at 10, at 410. And here's those few uh, uh, little showers. Like I said, more are well up there to the north. One is just crossing 10 right there about halfway between uh, Bernie and Kerrville and in and around town. Again, just a couple of these uh, light little uh, showers here and there. One just in the northwest of Castroville and on the uh, south side, just about to cross over 410 sliding up to the uh, northeast. So there may be a couple of damp spots on the roads. This is not really going to amount to too awfully much. Another uh, couple of showers there in eastern Wilson County. 63 degrees now we are still well above normal by, oh gosh, a good 40 or 20 degrees. Pardon me, should be in the low 40s right now, uh, mid 50s in the hill country, but it is down compared to yesterday as are these numbers are down a whole bunch by a good almost 30 degrees. The dew points are that much drier air has come on in here. We do have winds coming in out of the northwest 5 10 close to 15 miles per hour. We do have a couple of wind gusts out there 23 at Lost Maples and it is going to be breezy today with winds gusting about 25 close to 30 miles per hour at times. Mold is on the moderate side and it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the mountain cedar with these northwesterly winds since it's already starting to show up a little bit. We will drop down a few more degrees. The wind and also the cloud cover is going to keep us from getting too awfully cold. One or two of those leftover showers kind of hanging around here. And then later on this afternoon, 67, just about where it should be finally. And it's going to be on the uh, the breezy side with again, those uh, gusty winds going to get colder this weekend. Maybe kind of a hunker down inside grilled cheese and soup sort of weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New details on that deadly explosion on the southeast side. We are getting a look at one of the victims killed in Friday night's blast. So this is 36-year-old Roger Juan Jr. He was one of the four victims killed. The identities for two of the victims have not been publicly released at this time. Now, investigators have confirmed the explosion was not caused by a drug lab or an explosive device. The blast happened at K Bar Construction near I-37 I excuse me, and Loop 410. Firefighters say the property owner lived in a home 12 feet underground. Investigators are looking into a possible gas leak. A San Antonio store owner says he's seen a string of robberies targeting scratch off lottery tickets. Anwar Tahir says his store was hit last week at Liao Food Mart. He's part of an association of convenience store retailers in San Antonio and showed video of other thefts like at the Primo Food Mart over on Castroville Road. Tahir says an entire package of scratch offs are activated before selling them at a value between five to seven thousand dollars. He's hoping to figure out a way to change that so that owners are not out as much money when these thefts happen. Well, today the Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates for the final time this year. The central bank has been trying to slow down borrowing in the economy to tame inflation, while new government data shows record high prices could finally be letting up. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has more from Washington. With the Federal Reserve set to hike interest rates for the seventh time this year, promising new signs that red-hot inflation is cooling off. Consumer prices rose 7.1 percent in November from a year ago, the slowest pace since the end of last year. Americans' costs declining for gas, airfares, used cars, and medical care. Make no mistake, prices are still too high. We have a lot more work to do, but things are getting better headed in the right direction. The inflation report is welcome news for the Fed as it's expected to raise interest rates today by half a percentage point. That's a historically big move, but smaller than the past four rate hikes. The Fed can be more comfortable in slowing down its pace of rate hikes. Going forward into 2023, they're much more likely to do 
adjustments in the policy rate of 25 basis point increments. And that way they can see if this positive trend in inflation continues. The Fed is walking a fine line, trying to raise borrowing costs just enough to slow down spending and lower prices, but not tip the economy into a recession. But for some businesses, higher interest rates are already dampening the outlook. This is our four-point welder. Richard Kennel is the president of a family-owned factory that manufactures windows in Virginia. There will be a recession. No question. Oh, no question. I've been doing this for 46 years. I've seen many recessions and I've seen many booms. And I'm not naive about the fact that the business cycle is going to happen again. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will speak this afternoon. Traders on Wall Street will be closely listening to his comments on the jobs market and the impact of higher wages on inflation. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. A massive storm blowing across the country spawned several tornadoes that wrecked buildings and injured a handful of people in Oklahoma and here in Texas. Much of the central United States is bracing for blizzard-like conditions. In the northwestern areas stretching from Montana to western Nebraska and Colorado is under blizzard warnings. The National Weather Service said as much of two feet of snow as possible in some areas of western South Dakota and northwestern Nebraska. Ice and sleet were expected in the eastern Great Plains. Overnight, Ukrainian authorities have reported explosions in the capital, Kyiv. They say two administrative buildings were hit in a downtown district that is home to many government buildings. Meanwhile, the Biden administration is finalizing plans to send the Patriot missile defense system to Ukraine. An announcement could come as soon as this week. The advanced long-range air defense system is highly effective at intercepting ballistic and cruise missiles. Ukraine has been calling for the U.S. to send the system as it comes under a barrage of Russian attacks that have destroyed key infrastructure across the country. 437, 62 degrees. Got a teen or a young adult on your Christmas list. We're going to show you some of the gifts that could be a big hit. Both the uh, UTSA Roadrunners and Incarnate Word Cardinals have huge games coming up this week. We'll hear from players and coaches about how they're preparing for some very tough opponents. Take a look out there with Trans Guy looking over at I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. Things look pretty good this morning. And outside with live cam, I told Mike Osterhage I washed my truck yesterday. You're welcome, everyone. <laughs> Means we're going to see some pretty significant rain around here, or not. But uh, Mike's going to narrow in on our forecast for midweek and look ahead to the weekend. Hope you've got some uh, warm clothes nearby. Time for a look at morning sports at 440. UTSA Roadrunners will be just point and a half underdogs when they face the Troy Trojans Friday afternoon in Orlando in the Duluth Trading Cure Bowl. These teams are so close in what they've been able to accomplish this season. They're both conference champs. They both have 11 and 2 records and both the Roadrunners and Trojans are on a 10 game win streak. Roadrunners held their first practice yesterday in Orlando using a field at a high school there for UTSA. Friday will mark the last time they'll represent Conference USA before joining the American Athletic Conference next season. I feel like we already, we already did that in a way because we, we, we left with the conference championship and I feel like um, that was a big accomplishment for us. I mean, we never won a bowl game, program history, never finished in the top 25, we never beat a top 25 team. So it's a lot of things out there for us still and uh, we're going to go out there and put a chip on our shoulder and like I said, it's going to be a great test for us. Like Danny said, we finished with the, with the conference championship. Um, it'd be a great thing to go finish with, a, with our first bowl win too, especially heading into the new conference, just have that momentum for next season. Meanwhile, the University of the Incarnate Word Cardinals are preparing for their FCS semifinals up in Fargo. They're set to face a very tough North Dakota State Bisons this Friday night with a chance to go on to the championship game. This is the second ever meeting between these schools with the Bison shutting out the Cardinals 2014 uh, back to, uh, back in 2014, rather 58 to nothing. But this is a much different team than that meeting eight nine years ago. It's after the Cardinals beat uh, second seeded Sacramento State in Sacramento last weekend, 66 to 63, in the highest scoring game in FCS playoff history. However, North Dakota State is also coming off its 17th national championship and is fourth in defense against the pass, while UIW is number one in scoring. It's exciting. Um, you know, I, I, it's kind of my motto this year is that, you know, treat every game like the, like the last. Um, I've been naive in me to say that, you know, there aren't some implications here that, that are very important to this team. Um, but, um, you know, it's 
blessed to be in this position and uh, just trying to do a good job of just preparing like any other week. We've been preparing for this since January, since I got here. So, you know, we knew what the stake was. We knew what we what you know what the goal was. So you know, most of us are not surprised that we're here. So we're all just trying to you know, just seize the opportunity. Kickoff on Friday night is set for 6 p.m. The Spurs with the big assist for Elf Louise last night at the AT&T Center. Trey Jones and Devin Vassell helped brighten up Christmas for Eastside families with some presents and Spurs tickets. Even Jakob Pertl got dressed up as Santa. That is one tall Mr. Claus. Spurs will try to keep their three-game win streak alive tonight versus the Portland Trailblazers. That game is at 7 o'clock at the AT&T Center. And that's a look at morning sports. It's cool to see them in the Christmas spirit. Yeah. And time now, 443 and 62 degrees for now. If you haven't finished Christmas shopping, don't worry because there are still 12 days left. Hardy, did you write this for me? Next, see the large range of gift options for the teen or young adult in your life. And next, the family of a five-year-old who was thrown from a third floor balcony at the Mall of the America is talking about that horrifying incident for the first time. And welcome back. It's 446. The family of the boy who was critically injured when he was pushed off a balcony at the Mall of America is breaking their silence. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. He was thrown three stories. I mean, they're not like normal stories in a house. Three stories. The family of then five-year-old Landon, who was thrown from the third floor railing, reaching a settlement in its lawsuit against the Mall of America. What did the doctors tell you? All of them. This is a miracle. He should not be here. And now, for the first time, the family is speaking out to Good Morning America. It's been three and a half years now. Why now do you want to tell your story? I was frozen in time until I was able to speak. And now is the time that is right in our lives, where we've done a lot of healing, where it's time to move forward with the story of the miracle of Landon. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear from the little survivor at the heart of this story, eight-year-old Landon. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. Well, as uh, many of us know, finding the right gift for teenagers and younger adults can be a little tricky. If you have a few on your shopping list, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris has some ideas in today's holiday help. Shopping for teens and young adults might just be easier than you think. Think about useful splurges. So things they wouldn't necessarily buy or think of for themselves, but would love to have and use anyway. On top of Tanya Christian's list, an air fryer. They're still hot. If your young adult likes to chef it up in the kitchen, I would definitely recommend an air fryer. I mean, like they're really the best invention. This one from Dash got top scores in testing and it adds a pop of color. If they're into hairstyling, how about a good quality tool? This bio ionic curling iron created bouncy, shiny curls that lasted for days for most testers. This is a splurge, the Dyson hair dryer. The Dyson was the top performer in CR's lab test for dry speed, and it's actually one of the quietest too. What's also nice, it comes with a variety of accessories. For people traveling the world or just waiting for the bus, Consumer Reports recommends this Patagonia black hole mini backpack. If they need wheels, there's the electric bike. E-bikes can pedal like a regular bike, but with a little assist. E-bikes are a great option for getting places without a car. However, they can be expensive, so there's something you'll want to consider carefully. This one from Blix did well in testing, and it costs less than some other models. Another idea is a subscription box. They exist for all kinds of things, from beauty products to books to snacks, even silly socks. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Good ideas. Yeah, I mean, and the clock is ticking at this point. Looking up at I-10 at UTSA Boulevard, didn't see any problems there earlier and seems to be okay right now as well. If you are headed out and about today, uh, it sounds like if you're heading up towards maybe uh, Austin or Dallas today, Mike, that's where right. you may run into some problems on the roads. Dallas, well, just this morning, uh -huh. uh, heading up toward Austin. Okay. But, oh, look, I have a close-up. Hi, good to look see you. Look at that. Wow. Uh, and a couple leftover showers. And then it's just going to be, we, we haven't done this in a long time. We'll I know, close right? Up right here. <laughs> look uh, at you getting bashful. Yeah. I know, just, I know. Just, well, strike a pose. You know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mark was falling in love with this picture. Yeah. Aww. The Guadalupe up there around Comfort. People ask me, where is my microphone? There it is. <laughs> People ask me all the time, where is your favorite place to fish? 
And this is nice. it, the upper Guadalupe River near Comfort, Texas. And you said even in spots there, it is deep enough to put your kayak in. Cause oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you'll be dragging for some of that because yeah. we need some more rain. But, I mean, just look how picturesque that is. Beautiful. I know. It doesn't even, it, it's so picturesque. It doesn't even look real. But thank you very much for that picture. All right, this one's not bad. A whole lot better than the past couple of mornings when we had just a little bit of fog and mist hanging around here and everything. Now, speaking of sort of precipitation, yes, there is a little bit that is showing up right now. As you can see, just these few little showers. There's one right here that is just along uh, 10 heading out on the uh, east side and even a couple of uh, decent downpours right there. Not going to last very long and there may be a couple more in behind that. Just these few little light sprinkly showers that are starting to uh, show up now as I was talking about further up to the north up around Fredericksburg and then you go north of Austin and you're going to be running into some of these uh, heavier thunderstorms if you are heading out this morning. So keep that in mind. This is the tail end uh, of the system. I'm going to show you this in a second that uh, produce some of the tornadoes yesterday up around Dallas, or excuse me, two days ago up around Dallas, and then yesterday in the southeast portion of the United States. All right, the front moved through yesterday, and it is fairly breezy and behind. 13 mile per hour wind sustained Lost Maples, 10 at the airport, or excuse me, Port SA, and then we do have some gusts on top of that. 13 Bandera, 23 Lost Maples, so it is going to be a breezy day today. The front also pulled in the drier air. Dew point temperatures have dropped down 25, 30, 35, 44 degrees compared to this time yesterday. The air is that much drier, and so that's what's allowing temperatures to drop down. But with the cloud cover out there, that kind of keeps us from getting as cool as what we could get. Different story tomorrow, though. We will bottom out at 57. We're going to clear out later on this morning. Good looking day, 67, normal high temperature basically, and yeah, it's just going to be fantastic. There's the uh, leftover little showers here as that front moved on through. And like I said, this is the tail end of this huge, huge storm system. I mean, just a classic look to that thing that is continuing to uh, work its way off to these more severe weather potential off to the uh, east of us and then pulling down colder air in behind that. So forecast today, Couple leftover showers hanging around here this morning. Then we begin to clear on out 64 at noon breezy and then later on today 67 for a high temperature. Really nice looking day. Wind subside clear skies tonight. So we're going to have a lot of the good ingredients in place for radiational cooling. So 38 degrees tomorrow as well as Friday morning. Then we get a reinforcing shot of cooler air only 62 on Friday and then Clouds and moisture move back in here, so we are looking at 50 and low 50s over the weekend with a couple of showers and then back to 60s. And then, yeah, still looking at a, a fairly decent chunk of cold air in the latter part of uh, next week coming on in here. So you know, you know what you can do this weekend? We have NFL games both Saturday and Sunday this weekend. Oh, really? Which is kind of mm -hmm. cool. So that's something to do and stay inside and stay warm. Yeah, while you wrap your gifts. That's right. And, and my Lions are five and one in the past six. Your games. Lions are rocking right now, Mike. They really, really are. I know you're excited. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in this good sense, uh, <laughs> fill in the blank. <laughs> I was like, don't go there. Okay, mm, anyway, 453, 62 degrees. <laughs> the sequel to 2021's Dune appears to be finished with production, plus a new series on Disney Plus could soon return viewers to Witch Mountain. Dune Part 2 appears to be a wrap, plus Disney is going back to Witch Mountain. For the latest of what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Matt Wolf. There's Timothy Chalamet from Dune, the 2021 sci-fi epic based on Frank Herbert's best-selling novel. Now it looks like Dune Part 2 has wrapped filming, at least according to Chalamet's Instagram. In the post, the Dune star posing with his dad against a desert backdrop, the sequel to the award-winning film will feature, of course, Chalamet, Josh Brolin, David Bautista, and Christopher Walken. That's out November of 2023. Their only hope is escape to Witch Mountain. Back to Witch Mountain? Looks like Bryce Dallas Howard is heading there. Variety says a new pilot based on Disney's supernatural franchise has been greenlit for Disney+. Plus. Howard will lead the cast, which includes Isabel Gravitt from Netflix's breakout hit The Watcher. Disney Plus and ABC News are both owned by parent company Disney. Well. Got Spidey? Sony and Marvel have released the first trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. It's the sequel to the Oscar-winning 2018 film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Shameik Moore is back as the voice of Miles Morales, a variant of Spider-Man, along with Haley Steinfeld as the voice of Gwen Stacy, also known as Spider-Gwen in the films. That opens June 2nd of next year. 
And Vanessa Hudgens is 34 today. Matt Wolf, ABC News. And time now is 457 and 62 degrees for now. The children killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School on December 14, 2012 would be 16 or 17 this year. 10 years later, how have things changed when it comes to protecting students in schools? And a man crashes his car through a wall and is found shot dead on San Antonio's northeast side. What police are looking for in the case this morning? And checking trans guide right now. Roads are relatively dry there at 37 and Pecan Valley. Steven is out. RJ is in. And we'll check with him coming up at the top of the hour. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It has been 10 years since the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School. How the families of the 20 students and six educators killed in the mass shooting will remember those lost today. Outside with live cam right now, we've got some scattered showers in the area. Once again, the clouds are around, but we're not dealing with fog or mist for a change after a front came through. Mike Ostrage is standing by with more on that. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. That is December 14th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, temperatures are slowly changing. They weren't lying when they said it was going to be a gradual, gradual change. cold front. Yes, yeah. we were thinking that the whole time, Mike. You didn't want us to get excited about this cold front, and we're not getting excited ever again until you tell us. <laughs> Well, you can be excited about stepping outside right now because it's 62 degrees. <laughs> if you could have just seen him jump up or try to, that was pretty funny. Dew points down to 34, and that number is all about half of what it was at this time yesterday with those northwesterly winds. Kind of breezy out there. Still have some clouds. A couple little sprinkles. Going to show you that in a second. 67 for a high temperature today as opposed to yesterday's upper 70s and even a couple of low 80s around the area. So that's more like it. This is what we like to see this time of year and it's going to be uh, even colder as we go in toward the end of the week. The aquifer went up two tenths of a foot yesterday and the allergens mold is moderate. Mountain cedar is low. That was yesterday's count. It's going to be interesting to see what it looks like today when the updated count comes out, given the fact we've had some northerly winds and also what it looks like uh, tomorrow with some of those northerly winds. All right, we do have a couple of showers around here. The majority of everything, as you can see, is well up there to the uh, north of us. <coughs> Excuse me. And some of those may be on the strong side. So if you're heading up uh, I-35, up past Austin, well up to the north, you may run into just a few of those uh, showers around there. A little further on down, we just have a couple of leftover ones. There is, as you can see, this one spot just to the east of Bernie. Everything's kind of sliding off to the northeast. One there right around Shirts, a little bit of a shower. And then even a couple of them right there on the uh, southwest side of town, right over over here just inside uh, Wilson County up in toward Guadalupe County. Not a lot, kind of the, the leftovers, if you will, of that front that moved on through here. Wind out of the northwest, 10, 15 miles per hour. Again, we do have a couple of gusts out there. 12 Canyon Lake, 23 at Lost Maples. So not overly windy right now, but throughout the day, the wind is going to be picking up. So mostly cloudy. Couple of showers, uh, breezy this morning. Then sunshine, upper 60s, windy. Really, really nice day today and then tomorrow. Very cold start because we're going to have the clear skies overnight as opposed to the clouds this morning won't be as windy. So we're going to be down in the upper 30s tomorrow and then sunshine. We gain about 30 degrees or so throughout the course of the day. Friday is going to be cooler and then we get into the weekend. It's going to be even cooler only right around 50, especially on Saturday with a couple of showers. So it may be just kind of a stay inside and watch movies kind of a, a weekend. Details coming up on that in just a couple of minutes. Hitting the road right now. RJ Marquez. Good morning, sir. What's yeah, going on? Good morning, Mike, and good morning, everyone out there. It is pretty smooth sailing right now on our roadways. Not much to discuss right now as people get up and get out early on this Wednesday morning. Taking a look at some trans guide real quick here. We have I-10 at UTSA Boulevard, I-10 at Frio. Things looking pretty solid along our major highways this morning. Um, again, it's been kind of a slow start, and that is good news so far because as things tend to happen, it will kind of pick up in just a little bit. Taking a look at our wide map here. Uh, not much to discuss over in the uh, Live Oak area. There was a little bit of a delay, but uh, nothing showing up on the trans guide reports right now. And just keep in mind, there was also some construction taking place out in East Bear County as well, but that appears to have been cleared up as we speak this morning. Wanted to mention some other work that's taking place here. This is concrete work taking place along Loop 410 West, and uh, this is going to expect it to take place 
throughout the rest of today. So just kind of keep that in mind. This is out of Caliber Road and State Highway 151. Again, if you see crews working, any of these tech stock crews off on the side of the roads, just be careful as you make your way out there onto our highways. Taking another look here at Trans Guy 281 San Pedro. Things looking pretty good right there. And uh, 281 at Hildebrand along the quarry area. Things looking pretty solid as well. We will continue to follow the latest developments on our roadways this morning. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. RJ, thank you. Some parents in Shirt Cibolo, Universal City ISD me feel a little on edge this morning when they send their kids to school. This is after a student brought a loaded gun to a district elementary school yesterday. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with what we know about the incident. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. Definitely a terrifying situation for the families in that district. That student who brought that loaded gun along with some knives to school was eight years old. This happening at Rose Garden Elementary School yesterday around lunchtime. In a letter sent to parents, the, school, the school's principal says the third grader showed off the gun to another student during during lunch. A teacher was notified and was able to find the student and take that gun that was wrapped in a piece of clothing along with two knives. Shirts police were called to the elementary school right away. Police are investigating and trying to determine if there was a threat towards students or staff. In a statement, Shirts Police Chief James Lowry said, quote, it is unfortunate that this incident has occurred in our city, but I am thankful for the collaborative work that has been accomplished and being conducted to keep our schools safe. Now, Shirts PD says they are working with the Bear County District Attorney's Office to determine if charges would be filed against the eight year old student or the child's parents. Mark and Steph. Sarah, thank you. Today marks 10 years since the school tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut, which marked the beginning of a new chapter in America's struggle with gun violence. ABC's Andrea Fujii looks at what's changed since that day and what hasn't. This morning, remembering the Sandy Hook Elementary Massacre 10 years later. It was December 14, 2012, when 20 first graders and six educators were killed in Newtown, Connecticut. Jackie Hegarty was there, a second grader at the time. It's really hard to process that, and I'm still processing it 10 years later. No one deserves to, you know, see the things I saw when I walked out or to hear the things I heard. Now 17, she says her grief has fueled her push for new gun laws as president of the Junior Newtown Action Alliance. We're still looking for a federal assault weapons ban, but we're making progress. In the last decade, Connecticut has passed several gun reform measures, including an assault weapons ban and mandatory background checks. Other states followed suit. But since Sandy Hook, the nation has seen nearly 1,000 school shootings. After the massacre at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas this year, Congress passed the first federal gun safety law in 30 years, tightening background checks and offering so-called red flag grants for states to help police and families confiscate guns from people considered a threat. But advocates like Nicole Hockley, whose son Dylan died at Sandy Hook, insist more must be done. These acts of violence are preventable and that we all have a role in doing something about it. Meanwhile, support for the Sandy Hook families is coming in from around the country. Just released at midnight. Cheryl Crow's new song, I Shall Believe, honoring the victims. I shall be. Connecticut's governor is introducing new gun control measures today aimed at changing concealed carry laws and requiring all gun dealers to be licensed. But opponents argue these new measures would punish law-abiding gun owners rather than targeting criminals. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Here at home this morning, San Antonio police looking for a white Jeep or SUV type vehicle that left the area during a shooting that left a driver dead before crashing his vehicle. Police found the victim on Roundtree Lane near Randolph Boulevard at around 6 o'clock last night. It's after the driver crashed into a fence. Investigators believe the man was involved in a shootout with someone in another car before he crashed. Neighbors say they heard the commotion and ran outside. The victim is believed to be in his late teens or early 20s. Investigators have not yet revealed his name. Time now is 5.09 and 61 degrees for now. Congress introduces a bill to ban TikTok over spy fears, how it's likely to become law. Plus, some Northside ISD students continue the tradition of helping elementary students in need with a shopping spree. And outside with live cam, what kind of jacket do you need today? Rain jacket? Something with maybe a fleece liner or all of the above? Go crazy and don't wear a jacket <laughs> at all. Mike has your forecast coming up. 
Just about 513. Welcome back on your Wednesday morning. Students are keeping a holiday tradition alive at Northside ISD. John Jay High School students took some elementary students in need on a little shopping spree. Photojournalist Ken Huizar gives us a look at the tradition that's gone on for more than 50 years. Do you like these shoes? Yeah. It's amazing. It, I love seeing the smiles on kids' faces and I feel like it really brightens up their day and their Christmas time. Um, it makes me feel so happy and excited to be here. I love helping people out, especially kids who are in need. Um, it's, it's a really amazing experience. What's your favorite style of shoe? Like, do you like something like this? Or you could get boots. Do you like boots for the winter? Yeah. You like boots for the winter? Okay. Hey! Kimberly! You doing okay? I like the way you got your hair fixed. That's pretty. <gasps> Look, these are pretty. You want to try these? There you go. They fit good? It's truly heartwarming. It's very exciting. I love, you know, obviously seeing children happy. They get to, you know, experience and, you know, get to get free shoes or not free shoes, but they get to get their shoes um, and things like that. It's, it's truly amazing. You doing okay, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice seeing you guys. I'm glad you're getting all that good stuff. Case that photo is just Photojournalist Ken Weezar put that together for us. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, and a special thanks to the students at John Jay High School. 514, 61 degrees. So let's head how Apple's new Freeform app can give you an up to 99 friends and infinite canvas. Plus how Instagram is now competing with Be Real for some brand new features. Welcome to Allstate, where the safer you drive, the more you save. Like Rachel here. How am I looking? Looking good. The most cautious driver we got. Am I there? No, keep keep going. How's that? I'll say when. Now? Is that good? Lots of cars have backup cameras now, you know. Those are for amateurs. There we go. Like a glove, girl. Safe driving and drive-wise can save you 40% with Allstate. Click or call for a quote today. Where would the world be without nurses, without its innovators, its lifesavers, its fierce patient advocates? For healthcare to work, it takes nurses. That's why Johnson & Johnson has been a proud champion of nurses since 1897. At Kohl's, the more the merrier. Like more of their favorite styles from the brands at the top of their list, which means more great gifts and more amazing savings. Plus, earn Kohl's cash every day. Kohl's. In today's tech fights, a new push in Congress to ban TikTok in the U.S. Lawmakers have introduced bipartisan legislation amid growing national security concerns that the Chinese-owned app could be used to spy on Americans. The bills in the House and Senate would also block other social apps from China and Russia. Apple has released a new app, Freeform. It's a virtual whiteboard that lets up to 99 friends work together on an infinite canvas. Freeform can be used on iPhones, iPads, or Macs. And finally, some new features features on Instagram. A new notes function allows users to add 60 character status updates to their profiles and a be real clone candid stories is in the testing phase. The new feature recreates be reels daily selfies. A new selfie feature. I can picture myself trying it. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Nobody, nobody at this desk has been daring enough to do the mock turtleneck like Andrew Dimbert. No, no. But, but the the print, nice print. Thank you nice very print much. Everybody, everybody looks fantastic today, including yeah. R.J. Marquez. Oh, Good morning, thanks, guys. Yeah, glad to be with you guys on this Wednesday. Uh, things looking pretty good out there on the road so far. So yeah, not uh, bad. Hopefully we can keep it that way. Anything's it better it than up. yesterday. Yeah, yesterday <laughs> got a little busy sure. out there. So uh, you know what, people, just take your time if you're heading out there. Try and get out a little bit earlier, if possible. Maybe grab a coffee before you head out on the roadways this morning. But again, things looking pretty good so far. I-37 at Hackberry, things looking very nice, smooth sailing throughout most of the San Antonio area. I-37 at Pecan Valley, again, nothing major right now on our major highways throughout the entire area. As we take a look at our wide map here, and again, it's 
It's uh, green on the screen, smooth sailing all the way around the San Antonio area. Uh, there was a little bit of a slowdown earlier in Live Oak, but uh, it appears as if traffic is flowing pretty good there right now. I uh, did want to mention one quick thing that is happening at the moment. There's a stall that's being reported by Transguide right now on I-35 and the southbound lanes, and this is at Eisenhower Road, so in the near northeast side area. So just keep caution if you are headed out into that area this morning. Again, this is an area that usually gets pretty busy as the morning goes along, but again, looking at traffic right now, it does not appear to be any significant uh, flow issues there at the moment. So uh, wanted to also mention that there is some utility work taking place right now on US 281 North bound and this is uh, the utility work taking place the single southbound lane closure at overlook parkway and this is going to be in place till three o'clock this afternoon so again just uh, keep caution if you're headed out maybe doing some christmas shopping maybe going to lunch around this time at 9 a.m to 3 p.m but again smooth sailing throughout the roadways so we take one more look at transguide i-35 at san marcos pretty nice out there how are things looking outside mike Nice. I mean, the roads are pretty dry. There are a couple of damp spots here and there. Got a little bit of uh, leftover rain. Going to show you that in a second. But Elf on the Shelf and his buddy Sprinkles finally earned their keep, making some conches. Looks pretty good. They're doing a very good job with that. Thank you very much. If they want to deliver some here, more than one. <laughs> anyway, thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, nice picture, especially as opposed to the past couple of mornings when it was just misty, foggy, you know, yuck looking. It's a, a lot better looking out there. We do still have a few showers, as you can see, maybe one or two right there around uh, Poteet. And in and around town, there's really not that much going on. Everything is continuing to work its way off to the east. Got a few, uh, well, decent there we go. Come on, hold still. There we go. Uh, Luling getting a, a few decent uh, downpours as well. They're not lasting all that long, just continuing to slide up to the uh, northeast and further up 35 in towards San Marcos. A couple of those showers and just to the north of Wimberley. That's pretty much about it. I mean, one or two little uh, leftover sprinkles here. This is the tail end of that system. So if we do still keep a couple of showers around, off to the east and northeast. Fine. Now, if you're heading well up to the north of, on 35, well up north of Austin, you may run into uh, some more of those thunderstorms up there this morning. 22 mile per hour wind gust in Lost Maples. It is going to be breezy throughout the day. Here's the 20% uh, chance for a leftover shower this morning. Temperatures will drop into the upper 50s. We've got wind and we've got cloud cover, so that's going to prevent us from getting as cold as what we could get. Now, different story though. Tomorrow by noon, going to be up to 64. A lot of sunshine, breezy wind out of the northwest, 15, 20 miles per hour gusting from there, and we'll top off at 67 later on today. So much closer to our normal high temperature. Speaking of normals, and there's been some word getting out about this already, and long, long range computer models do have a pretty good chunk of cold air that's going to be settling right into the central portion of the country. This is the Climate Prediction Center going in toward the 20th and the 26th. So uh, about mid to latter part of next week, going into the weekend, going into Christmas. And we are going to be, as it's still looking right now, on the below average side. Average being low 60s and low 40s for Christmas specifically. So we are going to be colder. Now, still long range computer models aren't all in agreement as to just how much of the really, really cold air would be moving on in here. There is that chance it could be very cold, but again, still things are a little bit iffy. We're still um, more than a week away, so a lot can change between now and then, but it does look like it is going to stay on the colder side. We get a reinforcing shot of colder air late next week. 64 degrees today, breezy at noon, and then a high temperature today up to 67. Good looking day. If you are heading out this evening, I would take a jacket with you because it's going to cool off quickly once that wind subsides and we've got those clear skies out there. Tomorrow morning we start off in the upper 30s. Burr. Friday, upper 30s. Burr. And then staying at 62. <laughs> Had to do it again uh, with another kind of reinforcing shot of colder air coming in here on Friday. And then for the weekend, only 50 on Saturday, 54 on Sunday. Clouds, a couple of showers hanging around here as well. Back to 60 by the first part of next week. Uh, I love the idea of a chilly Christmas weekend. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yep. We so like I said, uh, indications, yes, that we will get cold air. But mm -hmm. really depending on some computer models, some, you know, have it all barreling on in here. Some have it kind of going, eh, just yeah. kind of kind of brushing by. So we'll, you know, something we just have to keep on watching. Of course, we'll know more as we get closer. Yep. 524, 61 degrees. Coming up next, a look at the first trip.
trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and an all-star performance of It's a Wonderful Life. 527 now to a follow-up to an Oscar-winning film and a new take on a Christmas classic. Here's Dave, CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Miles! Want to get out of here? Wherever you go from here, you have to promise to take care of that little boy for me. Make sure he never forgets where he came from. Here's your first look at Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the sequel to 2018's Oscar-winning Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. The latest animated adventure featuring Miles Morales swings into theaters June 2nd. What did you just say a minute ago? Why did you want to save me? That's what I was sent down for. I'm your, uh, I'm your guardian angel. If you missed Brendan Fraser, Seth Rogen, Christina Applegate, and other stars Sunday in their live table read of It's a Wonderful Life, You're Not Too Late, the benefit performance for the Ed Asner Family Center, a nonprofit serving special needs individuals and their families, can be seen online through New Year's Day. Tickets are available at the center's website, teafc.org slash wonderful. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That's quite the cast via yes. Zoom. Yes. 528, 61 degrees on your Wednesday. There are new signs that inflation is finally slowing down. So now what, how will the, that affect with the Fed's decision today raise interest rates once again? What economists say will change when it comes to your credit cards and your mortgage. Plus, Florida's orange crop seeing a big drop in production this year. How this is affecting prices at stores and even restaurants. Well, analysts had expected the Fed to raise interest rates today, but the latest inflation report is showing an unexpected drop. How economists say that could change the Fed's approach. Let's look out there with a live cam. Less humidity. Hey, we'll take that. A nice 61 degrees this morning. And good morning to you. We made it to hump day. It is Wednesday, December 14th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a good week so far. And we're excited of this gradual change because now it's a little cooler this morning and we're expecting it to get cold at some point. Yeah, it's going to be colder this weekend. We'll get sort of, well, actually tomorrow morning and Friday morning because we're going to be clearing on out. Then we get sort of reinforcing shot of some cooler air. And by the way, one week from today is the official start of winter. There you go. Ah, Knew yes. that was coming. Right. And there may be uh, something that kind of coincides with the calendar next week as well or within a, a day or so as far as another good chunk of uh, some cold air. But first of all, yeah, it is so nice out there to get rid of all that humidity. It looks just clear on this picture as well. We're not dealing with all that mist and fog and stuff around here. 62 degrees. Now we're still almost 20 above normal. Part of that's due to the fact that we have cloud cover and a breeze. So that's helping to keep temperatures up and cloud cover especially. And the cooler air has not continued to, to work its way on in here yet. But look at that number. Dew point is almost half of what it was yesterday. We've gone down 30, 35 degrees or so. So we still have a few leftover showers and uh, some heavier downpours as well, especially up around Austin. If you're sliding up there and going up uh, 35 in towards San Marcos, you're going to run into a couple of these, maybe one or two of them here and there going out 10 in toward Luling, a couple of these leftover showers and then further in behind. That looks like there may be one or two little spots there around comfort and in and around town uh, there on the northwest side of town, maybe one or two of these light little uh, sprinkly showers. The real, real light stuff could actually be evaporating before it reaches the ground just because the air is so dry. 55 right now, Bernie Stage Comfort, 61 in Converse, 64 in Stinson. And wind right now, gust 22, Lost Maples 12 at Bandera, 19 Canyon Lake. So we're already starting to see those wind gusts and it's going to be breezy throughout the rest of the day. Mold is moderate. Mountain Cedar low. That was yesterday's count. It's going to be interesting since we've had the winds primarily out of the north since that reading was taken since uh, yesterday afternoon when the wind shifted around. Be interesting to see what Mountain Cedar does as well as tomorrow's count, given the fact we've got the really windy conditions all day today. 64 at noon, 67 for high later on this afternoon. So like I said, it's going to be colder tomorrow morning than big warm up Friday, colder in the afternoon and then the weekend. Yeah, maybe that qualifies as just stay in the pajamas all weekend? Not bad idea. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, what is going on, sir? Yeah, Mike, things looking pretty good on the roads. Maybe a little bit of people taking your advice, maybe staying in a little bit, uh, staying in pajamas, staying a little bit 
warm this morning, but I uh, did want to mention uh, just one quick thing that uh, trans guy just uh, notified me about uh, the westbound lanes here at Loop 410 at the Culebra exit. That exit is closed right now, so this is something that uh, they just texted me about just to let some drivers know about if they are about to head out into this area. But again, smooth sailing for the most part across the San Antonio area. No major delays to speak of right now on our major highways, but we'll continue to follow this as the morning goes along on your Wednesday. I uh, did want to mention one thing here. There is a, still this stall that's being reported on the southbound lanes of I-35 at Eisenhower Road on the near northeast side, but as far as traffic flow does not seem to be affecting it too much there, and there are no lanes currently blocked there. It's off to the shoulder. Uh, another reminder there just to uh, be cautious with some of those textile crews and those crews that are clearing out some of these stalls and other delays that are taking place right now. But again, nothing too big to discuss at the moment. Again, the westbound lanes of Loop 410, this is the Calabria exit. This exit is closed right now. So, uh, you know, just if you have to be in this area, maybe head out just a little bit earlier if you have to drive in this specific area. So Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, what San Antonio police are calling an accidental shooting has sent a man to a hospital overnight. They say he shot himself, possibly while playing with a gun inside his southeast side home. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. Katrina, is there any update on his condition? Well, the last word we had from police is that he was in critical condition with a gunshot wound in his face. I also spoke to a family member who told me that he was waiting to get an update on the man's condition from other relatives who were still at the hospital. Police got the call about the shooting around one o'clock this morning. The home is in the 800 block of East Highland, not far from Rigsby in South New Braunfels. Officers told us the man who was shot is 20 years old. They say he was mishandling or possibly playing with a gun when it went off. After the shooting, there were a number of other people who gathered outside the home and they were visibly upset by what happened. The police told us that there were actually two other people inside the home with the man when that gun went off, but they were able to escape any injury. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Cybersecurity top of mind more than a week after San Antonio-based company Rackspace fell victim, fell victim rather, to ransomware. But the city itself and the surrounding community can breathe easy knowing there's a layer of protection with the Alamo Regional Security Operations Center, known as RSOC, working for them. Sarah Costa is here to tell us all about this. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. And the threat of cybersecurity becoming more and more uh, of a threat. And for a year, that center known as RSOC has been working to protect San Antonio from that threat. The center does operational security and protects from cyber attacks for the city of San Antonio networks and their surrounding community. The command floor gives the center has give, has a center gives the center the ability to monitor all of the physical security cameras, but also monitor cybersecurity threats. So the facility opened at Port SA last year, was built with 24 hour work in mind, fully functioning kitchen, a gym, sleeping quarters, all there in case of activation for security threat. There's multiple, you know, surveys that different companies do that show the trends and how it's growing. But it's also th this time of year, we're going into, we're in the holiday season. And so there are more scams that are taking place. <laughs> Patsy Boozer is the chief security officer with the city of San Antonio. She says RSOC is unique across the country. When asked if RSOC has been activated, she says the center has not had to had to activate since it's open. She says it will continue to push innovation to better protect people in our area from the growing cybersecurity threat. Mark and Staff. Thank you, Sarah. The Federal Reserve votes today on whether to raise interest rates. The goal is to lower inflation and the newest inflation report already shows some signs of relief. CNN's Amy Kiley reports on whether economists think that will cause the Fed to change course. This does seal the deal on them scaling back the, the size of the rate increase. That's a prediction of how the Federal Reserve eventually will respond to yesterday's Consumer Price Index report. It shows November's inflation rate was 7.3, a low not seen since last December. But the chief economist for Moody's clarifies his prediction is for the future, not for today's Fed meeting. The Fed's going to raise rates. Uh, they signal that they're going to do that uh, and uh, they're going to stick to that script. 
Fed hikes mean people have to pay more interest on things like credit cards and mortgages. But the point of them is to lower prices. If this relieves us of the historically high and damaging inflation and, and we have to make a slight trade off for that, I think that's a trade that many Americans would make. That relief could trigger a recession. Businesses like Amazon and Morgan Stanley have been cutting jobs to prepare. One of my main focuses as Secretary of Labor will be making sure that we have job training, workforce development, apprenticeship opportunities for new jobs we're creating, but for some of these other jobs that are happening in the United States right now that are having a hard time finding people. Of course, the Fed would rather pull off a so-called soft landing that would involve reducing inflation without causing a recession. I think there's still a chance, you know, keep hope alive. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. To Washington, a spending agreement for next year is one step closer to being finalized. Lawmakers announced they have reached a bipartisan bicameral framework for a spending agreement that would fund the government through next year. This is a major sign of progress from negotiators who have been struggling for weeks. Long COVID played a part in the deaths of thousands of people in the U.S. That's according to a new report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The report says in the first 30 months of the COVID-19 pandemic, more than 3,500 people died due to long COVID complications. However, experts say that number is an undercount considering up to 30% of people who contract the disease gone to have long-term symptoms. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle appear to be a hit on Netflix. The docuseries Harry and Meghan garnered more than 81 million hours watched in its first week. Netflix says this most watched documentary debut in the company's history. The series is in the top 10 list for 85 countries and ranked number one in the United Kingdom. Part two of Harry and Meghan will drop tomorrow on Netflix. Time now, 541 and 61 degrees for now. Up next, why the cost of oranges and your morning orange juice could soon spike at the grocery store. And let's look out there with live cam. It's a nice, cool 61 degrees. No humidity out there. Very pleasant, but eh, maybe just, you know, pack that jacket in the car and maybe a coat for tomorrow. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 544 in your morning consumer headlines. Bad news for those who like to enjoy some orange juice with their breakfast. Florida's orange crop is expected to fall to its lowest level since before World War II. According to the Department of Agriculture, Florida farmers should produce around 20 million boxes of oranges. That would be a 51% drop from 2021 and the smallest crop since the 1936-1937 season. Officials say the extreme weather, including hurricanes and a citrus disease, are to blame for the low supply. About 9 million people received emails from the Department of Education that mistakenly said their student loan forgiveness was approved. It's added to the confusion surrounding President Biden's debt relief program. So far, no one has received debt forgiveness because the program is blocked right now by the federal courts. The 9 million borrowers who received the inaccurate email have now started to receive new emails from the government correcting the error, at least attempting to eliminate some of the confusion. What a mess. I know, time now, 545 and 61 degrees for now. Up next, we introduce you to this little puppers from the Animal Defense League. Well, here is a, just a little itty bitty and only uh, what? 12 days. 12, yeah. 12 days old. Nadia's here from the Animal Defense League. Who is this little guy? This is Dusty Bottoms. And as you know, uh, we're always looking for fosters just like this one, um, where you can foster someone just like Dusty Bottoms. Um, but yes, he's with us today. And I wanted to showcase him because we do need everyone's help this time around, especially around the holidays. Okay, and and this is you know they have only so many hands to go around there. So uh, all different ages. It could be mom and her entire litter, just to kind of give a little more space over there at the ADL and all of their cages, or maybe one or two of them. And you know it, it, it'd be up in the middle of the night doing a little bottle feeding <laughs> here and the whiny little baby. But uh, but it's super easy yeah. and fun and adorable. <laughs> and taking pets home at Christmas and for Christmas gifts. Don't forget, it's not a one day 
It point. isn't. It is a lifetime commitment, and we're all about education and making sure that we match you with the right pet. Uh, so when you come out to our campus, that's exactly what we're going to do. However, if you're not ready for that commitment, we do have something, uh, what we call our foster program. It's called Embark, mm -hmm. and you can just get the pets out um, of that shelter life and into your homes for the holiday season, so it's and perfect. Don't forget, for the kids, this would qualify as volunteer, volunteer hours, hours if you, you need those. So if you like more information, little Dusty Bottoms there, nice little tribute to Three Amigos. <laughs> uh, head on over to the Animal Defense League, 1130 at Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center, across from the zoo, PetSmart on Four Winds, and you can find out more information about their fostering. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. 549. I like Dusty there. Let's go ahead and get a check in with traffic. <laughs> That'd be Mr. Dusty Bottoms. Oh, Dusty Bottoms. Yes, yeah. that's the puppy <laughs> Gotta get Dusty Bottoms in there. How would you not just want to curl up with uh, Dusty Bottoms right there, especially as we get hopefully a little bit cooler uh, down for the rest of the month. So good stuff there from the Animal Defense League. As we take a look outside, Trends Guide traffic cameras and uh, things looking pretty good out there, guys, before our 6 a.m. hour. And we always know that that 6 to 7 a.m. window usually gets pretty busy. So if you are trying to head out a little bit early, this would definitely be a good time to do so. Uh, Lou Fortin and McCullough, things looking, again, really, really pretty good out there. Traffic uh, moving along pretty nicely as we take a look at our wider maps here. And again, nothing major going on. Uh, this uh, stall is now being reported by our traffic maps as well as TransGuide. So I-35 southbound at Eisenhower Road. But uh, again, traffic seems to be moving along pretty smoothly there as I've been taking a look at some of the cameras in the area and it does not appear as if this is causing any significant delay. Uh, talking about just kind of heading out uh, this morning, want to take a look at some inbound times. Bernie to downtown right now is at 24 minutes. And we have Bulverde to downtown on 281 southbound. That is 27 minutes. That's always an area that gets uh, pretty busy throughout the morning. And then out there, New Braunfels on the uh, near, on the northeast side uh, to downtown. That one is at 25 minutes this morning. So a lot of green there. A lot of things looking pretty good on the roadways right now. One more quick look at Transguide and I-35 at New Braunfels. Things looking pretty good, guys, as we head out on our Wednesday morning. As we get ready for that six o'clock hour, which we know is always kind of busy. It was definitely very busy yesterday, but so far, so good. Only about three of our guys kept their beards from no shave. How's, how's yeah. it feeling now going into December? It feels good. It yeah. feels good. I've kind of got a little bit more accustomed to it. Yeah. And um, you know what? It's a little bit itchy, but uh, I'm kind of getting it trimmed up a little bit here. Yeah. And there, trying to keep it clean. Uh, it, works, yeah. it definitely works yeah. for you, oh, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate well, what, what are the comments from your family members and your, your so wife? I look more sophisticated. I don't okay. know what that says about me beforehand. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Hey, I was going to say, what are you doing about the itch? Because somebody said use beard oil and stuff. Yeah, you know what? I don't use any beard oil. I just kind of use like moisturizers and things like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. the beard oil does not really agree with me. I've not caught that over the past yeah. couple of years. Tips with RJ. It looks good. Thanks. I think you're too handsome to wear a beard, oh. but that's yeah, just, so yeah, anyway. Thanks. All right, uh, take a look at this, this little one. And look at just looking Aww. up at the camera going, I've been, I've been good. So right there with his little snowman. That is little baby Nora right there. If you'd like to send in some of the uh, KSAC Connect pictures, just scan that QR code right there. So thank you very much for that. Obviously with her little snowman buddy. Good view out there. We can actually see a couple little stars and or planets looking off there. Wow, we've got some uh, some skies that are clearing out just a little bit. Still have a few scattered light little showers around here right there on the uh, southwest side of town right along 35 just to the uh, north of Palo Alto College and elsewhere. That's pretty much about it. And some of these real light showers may actually be evaporating before they reach the ground just because the air is so dry. They had that front move through now going up uh, 35. A couple of these light little showers hours right there 35 1604 and continue going up to the north get up towards San Marcos and especially north of Austin you're going to be running into a lot more and up to the northeast but again this is all moving on out of the area right now winds gusting 22 at Lost Maples and it's going to be breezy throughout the day we'll still keep a couple of sprinkly showers around here temperatures will dip into the upper 50s not as cold as what we could get thanks to the wind thanks to the cloud cover then we clear on out and 64 at noon 67 for a high much closer to the normal high, low humidity, breezy, but still just a, a fantastic day. And then 
It stays very dry tomorrow as well, and so that's going to allow temperatures to really dip down in the morning tomorrow morning as well as Friday morning. Dew points try and come back up. We get another little shot of some drier air coming in here, and again, dew points try and come up again first of the week, but then held in check with another reinforcing shot of some cooler air. So instead of seeing all these numbers in the upper 70s, today is going to be the warmest day, excuse me, tomorrow as well as today in the uh, 67 degree range, the warmest day going through the next week and low temperatures. Uh, it's going to be real chilly tomorrow morning, Friday morning, and you know, nothing really out of too out of the ordinary. It's going to be 48 on Wednesday, but that's prior to the next chunk of colder air going to come in here for the latter part of next week. 64 degrees today at noon, breezy conditions, then a high temperature up to 67. Breezy today on the windy side. Tomorrow, very cold start. Big warm up. Same thing on Friday. Not as warm in the afternoon. And it's going to be a kind of damp and wet day. Wet weekend, I should say, with highs only in the low 50s. We'll be back after this. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the massive storm that has swept now across the country. It's still going. Tornadoes and several of them causing destruction and unfortunately death. Heavy snow, powerful winds, all with blizzard conditions in parts of the northern plains. We've got folks all over and I'll be tracking it as it heads toward the northeast. Then our ABC News exclusive with the family of the young boy who was thrown from a balcony at the Mall of America in 2019, speaking for the first time about that horrifying day and his miraculous recovery. Those stories and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, millions of Americans suffer from high blood pressure and doctors say one in eight of those who suffer from it don't even know they have it. Something that could be traumatic for their health. Just ahead a warning sign or the warning signs to watch out so you can stay healthy and strong. Trans Guide right now 410 at Marbach. Hopefully we will have a uh, fairly smooth commute compared to, compared to yesterday. We'll talk to RJ coming up on your Wednesday. Now at six, a scary notification from an area elementary school no parent wants to receive, a loaded gun brought to school by an eight-year-old student. How a teacher was able to intervene and potentially stop any harm from happening. Plus the latest on the fragile U.S. economy, what you need to know about the increase expected to be announced today. And let's look out there with a live cam, a little cooler this morning at 61 degrees. We'll take that, definitely. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Cooler, but not cold yet. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Hump Day. It's Wednesday, December 14th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a great week. Mark gave us a gift by washing his car yesterday. Oh, you're welcome, everybody. Yeah, I spent extra money washing the truck and uh, <laughs> driving into work this morning. I was like, gosh darn it. <laughs> a couple little sprinkles yeah. out there. Uh, most everybody probably got away with a car staying clean. So. Okay, good. Most people. Sorry you had to be the, you know, no, the guinea okay. pig there. I'll be the guinea pig now and then for you. <laughs> anyway, yes, it is cooler this morning. Much, much drier air. That's the, the big thing you're going to notice. And it's, as you mentioned, not cold yet, but just wait till tomorrow morning. So we do have a lot of uh, clear skies. Uh, well, st still some clouds, but I mean clear enough as far as any fog or mist or anything like that. And there's a plane heading out to uh, Areas unknown. A couple leftover sprinkly showers here and there. You know, just one or two of them. One up there right around uh, Canyon Lake. And then in and around town, we just have one or two of these little sprinkly showers there. Some of this may actually be evaporating before it reaches the ground. Uh, obviously, some is, but the air is so, so dry out there. So just, uh, you know, be on the lookout for a couple of damp spots on the roads. This is kind of the exception rather than the uh, the rule. And that will be it. They'll be hanging around, you know, a couple of leftovers this morning and then everything gets on out of here. 61 in town, mid 50s hill country. Now we're still almost 20 degrees above normal, but yes, it is much more pleasant when you step outside. Wind gust 22 at the airport, 21 Stinson, 18 at Canyon Lake. It is going to be breezy throughout the day. Molds mod is going to be interesting to see what Mount Cedar does since we've had north to northwesterly winds most of yesterday afternoon, overnight and this morning. Also, it's going to be interesting to see what then tomorrow's count is, given the fact it's going to be windy all day. We will dip into the upper 50s as the morning rolls on. Just barely still got that cloud cover out there acting like a bit of a blanket. 
mid 60s at noon. Plenty of sunshine, windy winds out of the northwest 15 20 miles per hour gusting from there and a high temperature today up to 67. Subtract about 30 degrees from that and that's where our low is going to be tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be cold the next couple of mornings and then it's going to be just one of those stay inside kind of weekends. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority getting ready to hit the roads. RJ Marquez is behind the wheel this morning. Both hands uh, on yes. the steering wheel. What's up? <laughs> always, always my 10 and 2. Got to keep them at 10 and 2 at all times. Um, all right, as we take a look at real quick at our trans guy traffic cameras this morning, uh, again, no major incidents to talk about when it comes to any sort of crashes or any sort of major delays. The one thing that trans guy wanted me to kind of notify our viewers about was this uh, closure here on Loop 410 westbound at Ingram Road. I'm going to get out of the way here. Um, it is at the Calebra exit. So if you are heading down to this area or have to take this exit, just kind of keep in mind that this is close uh, for the moment. Again, Loop 410 westbound at Ingram North, that exit, the Calebra exit, the westbound lane. So just kind of keep that in mind as you make your way out. Um, other than that, uh, smooth sailing across the San Antonio area, as we always say, green on the screen. That is good news, um, especially uh, up in our kind of our busier areas. Uh, we've been following this stall throughout the morning here on the near northeast side at I-35 and Eisenhower, but again, not causing any major delays. Uh, there's a little bit of a slowdown here uh, south side, here far south side, past uh, 281-1604 at uh, near Mitchell Lake. I'll check up that here in just a little bit. It looks like both the north and southbound lanes have been delayed for just a little bit, but right now Transguide is not showing us any major issues in that area, but that is something that I will check out here in just a bit. But again, smooth sailing so far far. If you need to head out, this would be a good time to do so as things are expected to get a little bit busy as we make our way through our six o'clock to seven a.m. hour. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. RJ, thank you, sir. Some parents in Shirt Cibolo Universal City ISD may feel on edge this morning when they send their kids to school. This is after a student brought a loaded gun to a district elementary school yesterday. Sarah Costa joins us live here in the studio with what we know about the incident. Good morning, morning. Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. This is the kind of notification no parent really wants to receive. That student who brought that loaded gun along with some knives to school was eight years old. This happening at Rose Garden Elementary School yesterday around lunchtime. So here's what we know. In a letter sent to parents, the school's principal says the third grader showed off the gun to another student during lunch. A teacher was notified and was able to find the student and take the loaded gun that was wrapped in a piece of clothing along with two knives. Shirts police were called to the elementary school right away. Police are still investigating and trying to determine if there was a threat towards students or staff. In a statement, Shirts Police Chief James Lowry said, quote, it is unfortunate that this incident has occurred in our city, but I am thankful for the collaborative work that has been accomplished by and being conducted to keep our schools safe. Shirts PD says they are working with the Bear County District Attorney's Office to determine if charges would be filed against the eight year old student or the child's parents. Mark. Sarah, thank you. New this morning, a man is in critical condition after accidentally shooting himself in the face. Happened around one this morning on East Highland near Rigsby Avenue. Police tell us he was mishandling the gun when it went off. Other people were in the home at the time. Fortunately, they were not hurt. The investigation is ongoing. Emotional testimony from a sheriff's deputy who lost his two year partner in a confrontation with a man waving a gun. We learned yesterday why the Bear County canine Chucky was not wearing his protective vest. The handler who cared for and watched over Chucky told jurors what happened at the scene after a chase with Matthew Mireles. Handler BCSO deputy Kevin Ross Ross Musson testified about his partnership with Chucky and how in the quickly changing standoff he was unable to reach the gear for the dog. It was a revolving situation to where once he hit the right when his truck stopped, the helicopter's telling us he's shooting at us, the truck rolls back, hits our car and he's walking away. So we're moving to stay with him to have him in eyesight to try to contain him. And with it going on, we're still moving away from my car. My car's disabled because of the truck that hit it, and we just couldn't get to it at the time. If found guilty of the charges, Mireles is facing anywhere from 25 years to life in prison. Right now on KSAT.com, hear more from Deputy Rasmussen's testimony about the moments his partner was shot. 
Well, today the Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates for the final time this year. The central bank has been trying to slow down borrowing in the economy to tame inflation, while new government data shows record high prices could finally be letting up. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has more from Washington. With the Federal Reserve set to hike interest rates for the seventh time this year, promising new signs that red-hot inflation is cooling off. Consumer prices rose 7.1 percent in November from a year ago, the slowest pace since the end of last year. Americans' costs declining for gas, airfares, used cars, and medical care. Make no mistake, prices are still too high. We have a lot more work to do, but things are getting better, headed in the right direction. The inflation report is welcome news for the Fed, as it's expected to raise interest rates today by half a percentage point. That's a historically big move, but smaller than the past four rate hikes. The Fed can be more comfortable in slowing down its pace of rate hikes going forward into 2023. They're much more likely to do adjustments in the policy rate of 25 basis point increments and that way they can see if this positive trend in inflation continues. The Fed is walking a fine line trying to raise borrowing costs just enough to slow down spending and lower prices but not tip the economy into a recession. But for some businesses, higher interest rates are already dampening the outlook. This is our four-point welder. Richard Kennel is the president of a family-owned factory that manufactures windows in Virginia. There will be a recession. No question. Oh, no question. I've been doing this for 46 years. I've seen many recessions and I've seen many booms. And I'm not naive about the fact that the business cycle is going to happen again. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will speak this afternoon. Traders on Wall Street will be closely listening to his comments on the jobs market and the impact of higher wages on inflation. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And back here at home, things could be taking a turn in the right direction for the housing market in San Antonio. Recent data shows positive growth next year. Home sales are anticipated to climb 2.5 percent next year with average prices increases by 4.6 percent. That is according to Realtor.com, who analyzes home sales and price data for the nation's largest metros. This production growth in pricing could mean a rebound for the San Antonio market after home prices declined to 5.5 percent since June. We have that full story on our website at kset.com. Let's talk about our San Antonio Spurs. A big assist for Elf Louise last night at the AT&T Center. Check it out. Trey Jones and Devin Vassell help brighten up Christmas for Eastside families with some presents and Spurs tickets. That is Jakob Pertl dressed up as Santa. Spurs will try to keep their three-game win streak alive tonight versus the Portland Trailblazers. That game is at 7 o'clock at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs, go. Yes, definitely. Nice to see them win again. Time now, 610 and 61 degrees for now. Still to come, the family of the boy who was hurt after being pushed off a balcony at Mall of America is speaking out. You don't want to miss what they have to say. That's coming up in your GMA First Look. Plus, big honors for Texas Biomedical Research Institute, what it means for the Alamo City. And outside with live cam, looking pretty good out there. 61 degrees and she hates extra attention, but our GMSA executive producer, Joy Presley, is in the booth right now. Yay. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday. And we're going to be celebrating this entire hour. We also have, <laughs> we're setting aside our entire 9 o'clock newscast for her as well. <laughs> Just kidding. Be right back.